Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I wanted to share with you what I consider to be the world's best worm compost tea recipe. I use worm compost tea in my balcony garden every three to four weeks. Now, in the last three weeks, I've not made worm compost tea and our summers have been really, really hot. The plants have been stressed. I have no shed cloth. I have had a problem with spider mites. I'm still having a problem with spider mites. I have had a fungal disease and I think this is the optimal time for me to share with you the recipe for my worm compost tea. My plants really, really need this uh, supercharged nutrient boost. Now, there are different types of worm compost tea recipes. I have seen people making the instant worm compost tea where they just mix three or four handfuls of worm compost tea in a bucket of water, mix it up and they instantly feed the plants. I have seen people swear by the recipe where they put it in water and let it sit for 24 to 48 hours, stirring the mixture every few hours. And I use the aerated method. The aerated method requires you to use a bubbler or an aquarium pump for you to pump oxygen in the water so that the beneficial bacteria has oxygen in the water. Now, the first important thing to consider when making your warm compost tea is the water. What type of water are you using? If you don't have rainwater, I have seen people use uh, tap water. They let it sit for 48 hours and afterwards all the chlorine evaporates and the water is safe to use for a worm compost tea. I personally prefer using rainwater. Now, the problem is we've not had rainwater. <laughs> we've not had rain in Germany for some time. So I have to use tap water. Now, I can wait 48 hours, but I don't have that time. So what I usually use is the vitamin C crystals or ascorbic acid. I usually just get a bit Uh, this much I mix with my water and I wait 30 minutes and then the water is ready for me to make my worm compost tea. So I'm going to get the camera close so that you can see exactly how I make my worm compost tea. So the recipe that I'm showing you is for a 20 liter container. The 20 liter container is where I have brewed a bunch of worm compost tea so i'm going to show you the recipe in a 10 liter container which i am later going to transfer to a 20 liter container so i have already showed you that i use vitamin c when i don't have rain water for my water and i've had the vitamin c crystals in the water for more than 30 minutes so i'm ready to brew my worm compost tea. Now, the first thing that goes in my worm compost tea is unsulfured molasses. Now, I don't have much left, so I am only going to take a tablespoon, which I mix immediately. It takes a bit of time for the molasses to dissolve. That's why I prefer using this method of starting with a bit of water where all the molasses can be mixed. So as you can see, the molasses has already dissolved in the water. If you mix the molasses with a bucket that is already full of water, especially when you're using a 20 liter container, it's very difficult for you to dissolve the molasses. But like this, they're nicely dissolved. The next thing that I add in my worm uh, compost tea is a bit of jaggery because I don't have a lot of molasses. And when I add the jaggery, it just adds more food 
for the microbial life in my warm compost tea and this is enough i've had this jaggery for a long long time and i only use a bit of jaggery now this is optional i have here active microorganisms which i'm also going to add just add like a core a little bit inside they're already active so they are going to benefit from the sugars that i have in there and then i have benase this is a product of the sugar production industry and this is also a sugar which of course is going to be food to my microorganism microorganisms I mix you can see how dark this worm compost is getting everything is nicely mixed together the next ingredient in my worm compost tea is bat guano, bat poop. This is concentrated. I usually add two tablespoons for 20 liters. This is rich with microorganism, microorganisms and it just adds to the biodiversity of my worm compost tea. The next thing that I'm going to add to my worm compost tea is seafood. Yeah? So I usually add about 25 milliliters, not much. Seafood is also another food for the microorganism organisms i will mix this and then i will show you how we add our dry ingredients first thing that i add to my worm compost tea are worm castings for a 20 liter container, I usually do four to five handfuls of worm castings. If you're interested on a do-it-yourself project on how you can make worm castings for yourself, please watch my other video on how to do a do-it-yourself project worm cast worm worm compost tower it's in the video description so i have the worm castings and then i had i add a handful of alfalfa pellets this is more food and then for the mixture I had humic acid for 20 liters I usually had three tablespoons of humic acid and then I add some rock dust rock dust is full of micro minerals usually add four tablespoons of rock dust and then with this combination i add terra preta for terra preta i only had two handfuls terra preta is full of rich minerals it also has active microorganisms and that just adds to the diversity of 
my warm compost tea. Now, before I had added bath guano, now I am going to add some of the seabed guano. Bath guano, seabed guano, they're two different things. Seabed guano has a different types of microorganisms that the bat guano might not have. So I always add seabed guano. I usually add three tablespoons of seabed guano. So these are the dry ingredients that are going to come in my worm compost tea. You notice that I put a rock at the bottom. The rock is simply to allow this container to sink to the bottom and not to float. Of course, other people allow this to float, allow their neck bags to float, but I prefer mine to sink to the bottom. So our worm tea is almost finished. We have the, the liquid ingredients sitting and I have the dry ingredients finished. What I usually do is I simply put it in the container, ensuring that all the goodness goes in the container. And to just help this soak, I nicely mix the ingredients so nice to mix them the warm castings that they have room to float in this bag so i have emptied the contents from the 10 liter container to the 20 liter container this is the pump that i'm using and this is how the setup is i put the bubbling stones in the water I submerge them completely that they're at the bottom and I have already filled my container up to the top like I said this is a 20 liter container and I always cover my worm compost tea with aloe folie it is very important for you to cover your worm compost tea in my opinion because then you reduce the risk of some beneficial insects falling in there you have beneficial insects like bees and sometimes birds trying to drink from there and when it's covered like this you reduce the risk of anything falling in there it also helps to trap some of the oxygen that is escaping from the pump because the alu folie acts like a covering of course there's not much that is trapped in there but at least i have seen the alu folie actually rising rising because of the air that is in there so this is it now i have to wait for the worm compost tea to brew i usually brew my worm compost tea between 24 to 48 hours maximum it is advisable not to go beyond the 48 hour period because then the beneficial bacteria and fungi actually starts to decrease in number. So I usually brew my worm compost tea between a period of 24 and maximum 48 hours. To be making this video, I already prepared a bunch of the worm compost tea. I usually, like I showed you, I cover it with aloe folie. So now let's open with aloe folie so that you can see exactly how my worm compost tea looks like. the finished product of my worm compost tea and it smells amazing this 
no smell no smell of rot or anything like that it's a perfect bunch i usually mix it with water when watering my plants and in a few weeks time i will be able to show you how amazing my plants are doing so this is the finished warm compost tea product i'm about to shop the bubbler and immediately i finish i am going to water my plants within the next 30 minutes so that the micro organisms and the worm compost tea can benefit my plants immediately you have to use your worm compost tea immediately within the first one hour after you finish brewing it and then you feed your plants so thank you so much for watching i hope that my recipe has been beneficial to you this smells amazing and i know my plants are going to love this so this is a close-up of how the worm compost tea looks i usually wait until it's morning or in the evening to feed my garden so this is how it looks like i said there is no bad smell everything smells wonderfully and in this container i have water already so i will fill up the container with some water that is already in there and feed my garden <laughs> 